So can you safely use smokeless ammunition in your old antique black powder cartridge firearms? Well, I guess the answer is it depends. Or maybe I could say yes if you're careful or yes if you do it right. Either way, I'm going to show you how I do it with 5070 and we're going to use my 1868 trapdoor Springfield. Now, I probably should at least mention that there are a lot of people who will say that the answer is no, absolutely not. You can't do it. You can't do it safely. And if even if you think you are doing it safely, eventually it'll have a problem. Well, I'm afraid I have to disagree again, mostly. Now, Black powder is not nearly as powerful as smokeless powders. It's not nearly as clean. It also doesn't make the pressure and have the pressure curve that smokeless powders do, or at least most smokeless powders do. And this is why they have black powder firearms that were made from mild steel, and they worked fine. Where if you use smokeless, and again, depending on the kind of smokeless powder, you could have a serious rapid decomposition of your firearm. Now, why would you even consider doing such a thing, right? Personally, I am of the opinion that smokeless powder is nothing but a fad and will probably blow over in a couple years and we'll be back to using black powder like God intended. But if you are one of those people that one, can't get a hold of black powder, two, can't make it, or three, don't want to deal with the dirtiness and having to clean it, which in my opinion is part of the fun and the charm. You can load, I'm sorry, assemble cartridges that are low velocity, low pressure, and that are safe for most firearms. And again, there's a lot of caveats and a lot of air quotes with all of this stuff. Now, in particular, we're going to be dealing with 5070, and I'm going to show you how I assemble some trapdoor safe 5070. Since we're using smokeless here, I'm going to use this liquid Alox lube, which works pretty well for smokeless. And no, I've never tried it with black powder, so don't bother asking me. Now, this stuff is pretty straightforward. You just throw it into a bowl, put a few drops on it, and then shake the hell out of it for a while. And then after that, we just pour it out on a piece of parchment paper and let it dry for a while. I like to at least give it 24 hours, but, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Now for this 5070, we're going to be using 9.5 grains of Trail Boss. Now I started with 8.5 grains and worked my way up to 9.5. And I'll show you why when you see the chronograph results. Trust me, this is plenty slow and plenty low pressure enough to work in 5070 trap doors. Okay, so this is smokeless 5070 with 9.5 grains of trail boss and the 450 grain Lee projectile. <laughs> 817. It's still pretty lame. That's ultra lame. Hey, it reminds me of that damn uh, Stevens I was shooting with the 45 Schofield. Yeah. Dang. Oh, the Spencer, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah that's it. That looks like a fun load. Accurate. 832. They're all ending up right there. And they're all going to be you. in that bush right you bet. there. You bet. Eight thirty two again. Eight thirty-five. Boy, nice and consistent. Eight thirty-four. Wow. <laughs> no, not at that speed. I better put my earplugs in before I get a lecture like I did last time. Yeah. Huh? Ah. I can't hear what you wrote. 
Yeah, yeah gum it, that's consistent. Man. But it's a nice, light, pleasurable load. Something you can take out the squirrels and rabbits with. Shoot that all day. All right, so now we have some 5070. That is the full service load of 70 grains of our 1F homemade balsa with the same 450 grain projectile. Oh, that's a lot more fun right there. I like the other one. 1213. There we go. 1187. 1200. Oh, I knew that one wasn't going to get there. Yeah. 1174. Nope. Love this thing. It sounds like a 22. Uh, it's exactly what Ed was saying. Hey, all right. Dude, this is a squirrel gun. That's a, a, a 50 gun. caliber squirrel, squirrel gun. gun. Hey, all right. Well, turn him into turn him into pink paint. Shoot him and kill him with the 22. But we know you, bro. You're an ass hunter. Yeah. You shoot him in the ass. They're done with That's this. That's why thing. I need a bigger caliber. <laughs> Far one. Just put it right on it. Nailed it. This Fuck, thing is man. wicked accurate. Yep. I like this girlfriend. Yeah, see what I'm talking about? That is slick. That's slick. I'd hunt with that thing any day. And whopping 800 feet per second. <laughs> Are we running this time? Yes. Did you get your heads in yet? No. Okay, just ask. Him. No, he hasn't sent them in yet. No, you see, we were actually, I was actually like, oh yeah, we're going to do it this time. Do you want a set of heads? I can get you a set of heads. No, I have a perfectly good set but of heads. I just need what the f okay. I know we just got a seat. Shit. Um, Probably a couple. Ah, oh, damn it. Let's see. Well, you just about can't miss. If we can reach out there. We know you can. The question is, can you hit it? Ooh, that's from his brother. That's deep to the bone. Hi. Hi. Wow, okay. This thing has some possibilities, Cub. Oh, yeah. Big time. Bingo! Yeah. That's the shit right there, baby. Second shot. You can always see, you can always tell when the the noise comes back later. Oh, two in a row. Holy shit. <laughs> Three in a row, God damn. You know what's really is the last time I shot this thing with 70 grains, I could not hit it out there. <laughs> yeah, just just to look, aim right at it, just to slightly to the left. Just hold this to the left of him. <laughs> yeah, just like that. Do it just like that. that big, bad now we'll try some black powder rounds at it. No way. I couldn't do that last time. No way. I couldn't hit it last time. Okay, we're both looking. Okay. Oh. Just a little low. You hit it. I love the way you guys put uh, Jimmy's uh, boy in there. I'm sure he's so happy. Oh, I'm sure he is. I bet he was ecstatic.
Boy, those sure get there a lot faster. Yeah. Yeah, they don't matter if you don't hit, bro. Hang yeah. into that. Yeah. And good God, they're so much more louder. And took his foot right off, though. At least I got the last one. Got it. You did it, bro. Oh, and you knocked, oh, knocked it down. <laughs> okay, so it's a little bit of a gap there, Kentucky boy. <clears throat> Let's see how my luck's holding out. All right. Let's see if you can get another one right off the bat. Don't let your brother down. Right over his shoulder. Yards right there, boy, with about a five, six mile an hour crosswind. I'll take that all day. Oh, yeah, I'd be proud to shoot that. Maybe, maybe not that one. that one. Yeah, nice. All right. Are these different rounds? No, same ones. Same ones. Bingo. Nice. I got black powders. <laughs> <laughs> So as you can see, those worked just fine. They were accurate and a lot of fun to shoot, and I think just about anybody could shoot those. Now, there's a few points that I would like to emphasize with this. One, you can do this, you can do it safely. Two, don't expect to get the same velocities with your safe pressure smokeless load as you would with a full load black powder round. The black powder round with 70 grains of R1F balsa ran 1187, I believe it was. The safe pressure smokeless load ran 832 feet per second. Big difference in velocity and power. Now, there's a lot of stipulations, a lot of if, ands, or buts, caveats, and air quotes that go along with this next speech because there's so many different powders, bullets, projectiles, cartridges, I mean, you name it. It's kind of hard to generalize everything like this, but overall, don't expect to get the same velocities. That's, that's pretty much it. 4570 is probably the closest when it comes to safe pressure smokeless loads getting close to the black powder load. But again, are you comparing it to the 500 grain bullet load, the 405, the 55 grain load, or the 70 grain load. There's a lot of variables when it comes to all of this stuff. So keep all that in mind. Overall, it's safe to assume that you're probably not going to get the same velocities. This especially goes for pistols in general, 4440, 45 Colt. A safe pressure smokeless load in 45 Colt is going to be probably 700 to 750 feet per second, what we would call a cowboy load. 44, 40, same thing. But you can load both those cartridges with 40 grains of 3F and a 250 or a 200 grain, depending on if you're talking 45 Colt or 44, 40, and get 1,000 feet per second out of a 7.5 inch single action army. But you could also load them down to 30 and use a 200 grain bullet and use a four and three quarter inch single action army and get 800 feet per second. So again, there's a lot of variables. It really just depends on what you load. But overall, I would say it's safe to assume you're not going to get the same velocities with a safe smokeless load as you would with a black powder load. Generally, it's going to be weaker, generally speaking. Another example is my 1887 Winchester 10-gauge shotgun. It can be very powerful, 
depending on how you load it. I can load that two and seven eighths shell with 100 grains of powder and two ounces of shot and it'll really kick ass. But if I want to use the safe pressure smokeless load for it, it's basically like a wimpy 12 gauge. It's only an ounce and an eighth of payload. That's all you can run. And it barely runs a thousand feet per second. It, a, a, actually, it doesn't. It's 998, I think, the last time I uh, chronographed it. But we'll round up a couple feet just for the sake of the video. So, again, black powder, a lot more powerful than the smokeless load. And you have a lot more options. You could load the black powder up or down, or smokeless, you're pretty much stuck with it. Now, as far as running smokeless, safe pressure smokeless in your antique firearm, cartridge firearm, I should mention that specifically because I'm sure somebody will say, oh, you can't do that with a muzzle loader. Yeah, okay, thank you. <clears throat> your black powder cartridge firearm. If you're one of those people that's watching this that's saying, I would absolutely never run smokeless in my fill-in-the-blank antique black powder cartridge firearm, hey, I understand completely, and the good news is, is you most certainly don't have to. I don't make a habit of running smokeless in my antique black powder cartridge firearms, mostly because I prefer to shoot black powder cartridge, especially for those kind of firearms. That's what they were made to use. But it's nice to have the options, and I do have a smokeless load for every one of my black powder cartridge firearms that I own, just in case I'm having an off day and I feel like shooting smokeless instead of black powder. Not that that happens very often. Now, I have a particular point of view when it comes to loading ammunition in general. And I don't care if it's black powder or smokeless or something for something old or something new. The way I look at it is like this. In this day and age, there's not a lot of personal accountability and if you are a hand loader, you need to take responsibility for the ammunition that you are loading and the firearm that you're using it in. We've all seen the pictures and videos of top straps and cylinders blowing off and barrels and receivers splitting in half because of something that went wrong. What that something is, well, it's pretty obvious it's something serious to cause that kind of a problem, but how did it come to that? Now, personally, my point of view is something like this. Were you really pushing the limits of that cartridge and that load, or were you being careless? Well, by careless, I mean having a six-pack and going out to your reloading bench and reloading some ammo. Now, I'm not saying that everyone who's had a catastrophic failure with a firearm was because they were mixing booze and reloading components. I'm really just making an analogy. Anyone can make a mistake, but that's why this is serious shit and why you, as a reloader, need to take responsibility for the ammunition and the firearm that you're loading it in. Again, not a lot of personal accountability nowadays. Everything is always somebody else's fault. Now, this brings me to the next part where everyone seems to think that they're going to get sued if they tell you what their load data is that they're using, and then you have a problem, and if you have a problem, then somehow they're liable. I don't see how that works, but I'm not a cop and I'm not a lawyer, so what do I know? Uh, as far as the powder goes, uh, this was Trail Boss. Uh, there are some other powders that also work. Uh, 5744 Accurate comes to mind. That's another one that I like for reduced loads. Trail Boss and 5744 I've used a lot for reduced loads, and they work really well. I prefer Trail Boss mostly, uh, but 5744 also works, and there's a couple other ones too. So that's what we went with with the, this one. And I've used Trail Boss for a lot of other reduced load stuff too. 3030, 30 out 6, 308, and uh, other pistol caliber cartridges too. And it works fine. Trail Boss seems to be one of those powders where people either really like it or they really dislike it. And I don't know why. And I've also heard they don't make it anymore, which is unfortunate. But uh, luckily, I have a good stockpile of the stuff. So I don't really have to worry about that, at least for quite some time. So I think that's about it. So as usual, folks, if you thought this video didn't suck, do me a favor and hit the like button. Consider subscribing. And if you did think it sucked, well, then go make your own damn video.